Okay, so we're just getting ready to fit the uh, um, sort of gearbox. <laughs> we're getting ready to put things in the outer outer gearbox cover. There's a sort of gear change assembly. I'm not sure what you'd call this. Right, so you've got uh, these two curved springs that, that go in here. Okay, and, and hold the sort of gear change dead central and you know, spring it back to its central position. Uh, then you've got a couple of springs uh, for these plungers. Okay, and these plungers, they go in there and they're spring fed. And they, those, these plungers jump out and they, and they engage, the teeth engage with this quadrant. And then it's that that actually turns the quadrant round. And then you've got the, uh, I think it's called a striker plate. Okay. So over here I've got new ones and over here these are the old ones. Now, I tend to replace these springs as a matter of course because I do find that they wear. And then it can lead to a pretty sloppy gear change. If your gear lever, you know, there's a bit of play in the gear lever, it's a bit sloppy, then it's possibly these springs that are worn. And I always change the plunger springs as well. They're the springs that go under the plungers and make sure they make really good contact uh, with that quadrant. Then, in this case, the actual striker plate, I think it's called, is quite warm. We can see it's quite pitted. And if you look at these, these edges, it's these, see these bottom inner edges, it's those that really count. There's a bit of wear, you know, just these edges here. You can see there's a little bit of wear on those edges and the whole thing's pitted. So to be on the safe side, We've got a, a nice brand new striker plate. I sometimes actually change the plungers as well because the sharpness, they, they can sort of get a bit blunted and then I worry that they don't engage with that quadrant too well. But at the moment, it's one of those where no one has got any in stock. It's one of those shortages that happen now and again of parts. Um, they're made by... L.F. Harris, virtually all, all, all these parts these days. So, you know, hurrah for L.F. Harris when they started to make the Harris Bonville, which obviously is not made anymore, but they still make the parts. So that's great. Um, but it's one of those that no one's got plungers in at the moment. Uh, you know, no one knows when they're coming in. So those, those are fine anyway, I'm fairly sure. So we reuse those. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the springs in first, then I'm going to put the plungers in. Uh, with the springs and then the plungers and then we put the um, striker plate on top and screw it down with these four nuts okay so that's what we're going to that's what we're going to do now okay so the first thing we're going to do is put in these semi-circular springs as you can see they're going to be quite tight okay make sure it's seated properly Yeah, but you can see those springs are tight. They hold that, and that's what returns the gear lever back to its nice, you know, sharp position. If the gear lever is a bit sloppy, a bit lazy, there's probably these springs because that puts it, holds it really tight. And so that's why I always change those springs, even though that was a bit of a more of a kerfuffle than I was expecting. The plunger springs, and then the two plungers. And the uh, and the sort of the, the flat sides. Let's see the sort of the, the flat bits face each other like like that when they go in. So the uh, ang the sort of sloping sides, the angled sides, to the outside. Let's give those a bit of oil. a lot better it's just a bit of gearbox oil and then we've got the striker plate and we've got one side is flat and the other side has got these um, this bevel on it and the bevel goes downwards so the bevel goes on the bevel on the back of the of the plungers okay oops <laughs> 
get it around the right way, that always helps. There. Okay. And then I've got these four nuts. Uh, they've got these little spring washers on. Okay, and then pop those on. And then I'll just uh, finish tightening them up with uh, my socket. tight they're not going to come undone. I got the spring washers underneath them so they should be fine and there we're done. And now uh, I think you can see from that how the gearbox works so when, when we turn the gear lever which is attached to this spindle then that sort of quadrant moves and let's say it moves down then this plunger is forced underneath the striker plate and so it doesn't do anything but this plunger when that's moved down, the plunger is suddenly free and poof, it pops out, engages with the butterfly quadrant that's in the gearbox, and then moves that quadrant down. We let go of the gear lever and it goes back to where it is now. And as they want to change up, then the quadrant goes that way, forcing this plunger underneath the striker plate that way. And this plunger pops out, engages with the quadrant, and moves the quadrant up. Okay. So that's that's so uh, that's how it works. Okay. So there we've got the plungers in around the right way, striker plate with the bevel face down, and uh, and we're done there. So then about the last bit of prep we've got to do, we've got to put oil and stuff on. Um, I this being a T160, I don't know if I'll try and get this in. And there's a little needle roller bearing in there. Can you see? I'll see if I can get some light on it somewhere. It's, a, it's a, one of those little needle roller bearings, okay? Probably I can't get the light on it, so but it is a needle roller bearing. And um, it, and that is for the cross shaft. That's where the cross shaft comes through. So you've got the left-hand gear change. Now, this it was pretty seized uh, solid on this bike. So I've got a feeling that the shaft was just turning, you know, and not the bearing, which is quite common. But it's freed up. Uh, I've got it freed up nicely. So hopefully it'll just make that a little bit of difference to the gear change. So that's been done. And then this is the kickstart shaft. And in the back of the kickstart shaft, we have an oil seal. So that's the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put that oil, well, put that oil seal in and then fit the kickstart shaft. Okay, so we're getting ready to fit the kickstart unit in the outer casing. Uh, but to do that, we... Uh, we have the oil seal that goes around the shaft and the oil seal goes in the uh, sort of oil seal carrier. Okay, now, and this is a slightly different oil seal. So it's not a normal oil seal with a spring on one side and it's not just an O-ring. It, it, it's uh, like an X-ring seal. And I think that these seals are, are, are the ones that they now use for the push rod tubes. They certainly look sort of identical. But this, and so I think they, they realized that these were good for the kickstart shafts, and now they use them as well for the, um, for the push rod tubes. Um, but I'm not sure. It could be a different size. So the uh, oil seal goes inside the carrier. That comes out, just pushes in. And then the carrier goes in the casing. Okay, so I've got uh, a socket which is just going to sit in the carrier. And I'm hoping that that will enable us to, to uh, drive the uh, carrier home. I've cooled the uh, actual seal retainer down in the freezer to try and shrink it a bit because these can be a tight fit. And then we're putting the new oil seal inside the retainer there. I think you can just see that in the bottom of the camera, yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to pop this in there. And uh, 
I've got and I've, I've used the uh, blowtorch to uh, heat up the casing try and expand it a bit yeah I think that's going in I think we're in now yeah jolly good and uh, so that's in that seals in seal retainer when that's cooled down a bit, uh, we'll put a bit of oil on the uh, kickstart and put the kickstart in place. And then we're ready to fit the outer casing on the inner casing. <laughs> 